at least you might be seen and today I have another tutorial for you guys. Today we're going to be talking about methods. In, in Java, methods are used to perform actions, like I said in the first tutorial, and they're called functions in every other language, but they're called method in Java because Java likes to be special. In programming, you're going to be either using the method or defining the method. So, you have a method definition set up somewhere, which talks about everything that happens when you use the method, and then you can use the methods in different in wherever you want, and whatever you use the method, it'll refer back to the method definition to find out what to do. So, we're going to talk about defining a method, and so we're going to start off with the method name. Now, there are a few things you can put before method name, but but the method name is, is the most logical place to start. So, after the method name, you put down two parentheses, and in between the parentheses, you put down what you call the parameters. So, the parameters are what you need to use and what information you need to perform the action. For instance, in my, in my second tutorial, I used a Minecraft example where I said that they have a place block method where by they use that method they'll place the block. Some information you might need when placing the block are, well three of them could be x, y, and z. Where, where in the world do you want the block to be placed? And another one might be what type of block. So those would be some examples of parameters. And parameters have to be certain um, types of, or certain variables in order for it to work. After the parentheses you, do, you put two pointing brackets and between the pointing brackets goes, goes the method body. Now the method body goes is the biggest part by far. It's, I said on average probably about seven lines of code, but it could be a 50 or 200 lines of code depending on how complex your method is. And the rest is all just from the very first line. So that's the, that's the method body and that defines everything about the method and what happened. Okay, so before earlier I said that before you need to put a few things before the method name. So there are three things that you need to put before method name. And they need to go, the three things are the access modifier, static versus non-static, and return type. Now it always needs to be in that order. Sometimes you can omit a few of them under certain circumstances, but they always need to be in that order. If you get the order mixed up, then you'll, you'll get a glitch. So the first one is access modifier. There are four different things you can put down for access modifier. Public, default, which where you place nothing, omit it like I said earlier protected, and private. Now those vary in, in how much other things can access it. So um, it's, it's, mo it's mostly an issue that comes up when you have multiple classes. For instance, private, only the class you're in can access it. And with public, anything can access it. And with private, things in the same package can access it, and the class can access it. And under protected, it's, it's in between. So know that, know that there's four of them. Private is most restricted. Public is least restricted. You'll, you'll learn that you need to use this later, but for now, if you use public every time, you'll, you can't go wrong, really. I think, I think for um, data usage, it's sometimes beneficial to use more restrictive ones, but for now, just know what it is. The second one I talked about was static versus non-static, and static versus non-static is probably the most complex idea that you're going to be working with in Java. So, think of the class as we have it now as a blueprint. You can make objects of the blueprint, which if you had, for instance, you had a blueprint of the skyscraper, you can make multiple skyscrapers from it. And static things are things that are not unique to the individual objects of it. It's only with the blueprint. For instance, in my skyscraper example, on the blueprint you might say, you might have a record of how many skyscrapers you've built. That's not something that would apply to the individual skyscraper. For an individual skyscraper, they might each have a different height, a different width, different materials, and it could be unique to each one of them. But Static variables are things that, or static methods as well, are things that can only only apply to the blueprint and not unique ones, only things as a whole. That probably was a little bit hard to grasp, but if you if you have a problem with it, like you'll get, like if you're coding, you you will you'll probably get a glitch at some point that says static variable or method used in non-static static context. And if if you get that, just switch it from static to non-static. And over time, you'll get more used to it, especially when we get into making multiple classes. You'll understand better what that mean what it means. So the third and final one is the return type. This one is very relevant to right right now. When you're using method, you often want to give something back. Like um, for instance, today we're going to talk about the add method. So you're, you're going to you're going to have method saying add these two numbers, and then you want to give you back this, the the sum of the two numbers because that's what you use the method for. So the return type is what type of variable the, the, the it's going to give back. So. For instance, in our add to numbers variable we're going to today, we're going to have it return a byte. And that goes back to the primitive bit data types from two tutorials ago. And if you don't want to return anything, sometimes you want to do that. For instance, this the place block um, thing that I said, it's different depending on how I do, but 
if it just says, if in the method body it says place this block, then it's possible that there's no return type necessary. And when there's no return type, you just put it in a void. With the other two, if it's not, like for instance, if it's not static, you just omit it. And if, if you're going with default on the uh, axis modifier, you just omit it as well. But the return type has to be there every time. And if you don't put anything, if you don't want to return anything, you put down void. So just know that. So that's the method to work, and we're gonna we're gonna get some hands-on experience and use one to make one now. Okay, so I've already saved um, our our file as methods.java. Now we're gonna make our class public class methods. Now we're gonna move on to our main method public static void main. Okay, so we're gonna talk about methods today. So we're finally gonna t I'm finally gonna tell you what all the stuff in the main method means. This part where it says main, that is the name of the method. When you make methods yourself, that, that's where you put the name of the method that you want. And before are things called modifiers. So I'm going to start with the modifiers. There are three modifiers. The main method happens to have all three defined. That will not always be the case, but in this case they're all three, so it will make it easy to explain. First one, public. That is an access modifier. I'm going to put a big comment here to explain them all. Access modifier. There are four types of access modifiers, which is public, default, protected, and private. This list is from least restrictive to most restrictive. And then when I say default, that's when you don't put anything down. So so if I just took away this public like that, that wouldn't cause a glitch. It would just know that access modifier sets up default. So the difference between these, they vary in how much in how much this method or variable can be used by other classes. So if it's set to public, it can be used by any other class. If it's set to private, it can't be used. It can't be used by any other class. And then they just vary in how much they can be used by other classes in between. So um, to be honest, you can probably stick with public most of the time, and it'll, all your applications will work. It doesn't. It'll take a while for you to get to the point where it'll make a difference which one you use. But uh, if as long as you know that it controls how much methods or variables can be accessed by other classes, then that's fine with me. Second one is static. Um, so there's only two choices. Either put down static, or you set it as non-static, which and if you set it as non-static, that means just don't put static down there. So if just either you put static down there, or you don't. What it does is, it says whether this method or variable is unique to the object or not. Static um, is actually probably one of the hardest concepts to learn about. It took me forever to understand, but um, I'll do my best. So what static means is whether it's unique to this particular instance of the class or not. So I think a good example is I like to play Super Smash Brothers Brawl, and in the character Diddy Kong, he can make two bananas, and then he can't make any more than that. So in that game, they, they might have a class called Banana, and that, that all the properties of it are stored in that class. And those would all be instance vari variables, everything that controls how it acts in the game. And then there might be a static variable in there that is a counter of how many bananas there are to make sure that the more than two are created. So the instance variables can all be different. The what x it's at, or what x, y coordinate it's at, um, and uh, what color it is, I, I don't know. But the static variable is the same for each one. That's the best thing I can think of. And it's, it's a very hard concept. If you have trouble understanding it, then just go with one or, the, one or the other, and if you glitch that says using static when you're not supposed to use static, or you're using not, not using static when you're using static, just switch it. So then the last one is called the return type. Now, um, when static with, with static and X modifiers, if you don't want it, you just don't put it down, because with public, if you don't put it down, it'll assume it's default, and with static, if you don't put it down, it'll assume it's non-static. But with return type, if you don't want to have return type, you put down void. So void is when you don't have return type at all. And now I'll tell you what the return type is, what the method gives back. This may seem a little weird. It's something you don't experience with, with um, methods that have void, like the once we use like print ln and main, I'll both have void. L later on, we'll work with a method that um, that has a return that's not void. But what what you can do is you can set something equal to a method, and then you can have what it gives back. Examples of what you put down there is maybe an int, so you could put down int there, and that's what it gives back. Or you can put down string, or and there's some several other things that that you can put down there. Pretty much anything really that you just want the uh, method to give back once it's done performing the action, or it could even be a class that you put down there. So it, it, this can be virtually anything. So these these three th things, as I said, 
Static and public, you could um, not include them and it will, it will still be, know which one what to do. But if you do include different ones, it always has to be in this order. So so I can't take away public and put it in between static and void. That would that would give me a glitch. Or it have to be X modifier, static or non-static, and return type. It has to be in that order every time. And so then we got the name we talked about, and then we got this parentheses, and then we got brackets. Between the brackets goes what you want the code to do, and in between the parentheses, goes things you input with it. So in this case, the input is string args. We'll go over what that, how you can change the input later, but what this is, is when you use the method main, you can give it inputs, and those inputs are stored in this variable. It'll, it'll make more sense in our example in a second, but what the parameters are, are what you feed to the variable to use to usually generate a return type, but it's also what it would use to perform the action. A good example is the system the out.println method we've been using. This right here is the parameter. So if we say hello, the parameter is hello. It knows, it needs to work with the string hello. We, we haven't talked about strings yet, but strings are our words, basically. It has to work with the string hello in order to print something out. Okay, so now we're gonna create two variables, byte a equals eight, and we're gonna say byte b equals seven. We are going to create a method that will add these two numbers together. We're gonna create it, I'm gonna make this public. It has to be static because it's being um, referenced from a static method, so it has to be static, otherwise we get, we get a glitch. And the return type is going to be byte. We want to give back the sum of these two, num these two numbers. And then we're going we're to call the method add. You can call it anything you want. And for the parameter, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list two variables. I'm going to call byte x and byte y. Notice that these names in the parameters don't match these ones. Uh, these ones, sorry. They don't have to match the, the, the inputs. And then, so this, this add method has been fed. We want it to add y to x like that. We learned how to do this in the last tutorial. And then we want it to give back the sum. So we want it to, to give this back. So return x. So when you type down return, whatever comes after that is what's going to be returned by the method. Okay, so now we're going to type system.out.println. And we're going to have it print out the method add with the parameters a comma b. So it inputs a to add. Add registers is x. It sets x equal to 8. Then we feed b in as y. It sets y equal to 7. And then it adds y to x, making it 15. And then it returns x. And up here, it receives x, which is now 15. And then it prints it out. So I'm going to save it and compile it and see how it goes. See this works. There you go. Print out 15 just like I said. And you can change these variables over here and it will work just fine. Now I've got a little challenge for you to make to see if you understood this and I'm gonna show you that right now. For today's challenge, I want you to create three variables and run them in a method that can handle three parameters rather than two. And I want the method to multiply the three parameters and you need to print out the product of these three numbers. I'll give you one hint. You do need to have a Good understanding of what I told you about modifiers because you'll need to change them a little bit in order for this to work with these specific numbers. That is, it should come out like this. There, it says 280. If you plug it, this in the calculator with 8, 7, and 5, it'll come out as 280. So that's your challenge, and I'll, you have to make be sure to design it in a way that it will it will it can accommodate any three numbers. So I don't want you to just print out 280 and say it's done. Okay, so that's all for this tutorial. I hope you guys learned something. If you uh, in enjoyed it and found it helpful, I would appreciate it if you um, rated the video or commented on it and subscribe. If you subscribe, you'll be notified when I make more of these Java tutorials or whatever tutorial I'll have you make in the future, I don't know. And if you um, would like some more challenges to help you solidify your knowledge in Java, then I would recommend you check out my website, sinforge.co. I, I have several other challenges listed there. And I also have my games and a list of all my tutorials on that website. It's also a work in progress, so any critique would be much appreciated. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.